lifetime perfecting a set of skills and trying to get better at something that you sort of fall into and then you fall in love with and then you try to continue to grow it. Um, you don't really don't imagine that one day it's going to come here. It's going to land in a place that as special as this place is. Um, I have a quote from, from Forbes um, that I absolutely love. It says, 10 years of trying will make you eventually make you look like an overnight success. Um, I was at Stanford coaching some really good athletes, you, you know, but they get from decent to pretty good, but pretty good is just not good enough. Until you get to a point where people ask you, like Chris said, it's Stanford. Stanford is making you into what you are. So I decided um, that I want to go to a place that whatever was created, whatever was built, had to be attributed back to our, our level of, of work or, or, or desire or role or drive, whatever you want to call it. So I went to Kentucky and, and my, my wife, who I proposed to after a week and married a couple of months later, I uh, thought it would be funny to tell me, we're going to see what you made of, buddy. Um, and I took that as a challenge. And, and again, this is another challenge. Um, and the thing for me is, this is an opportunity. Um, people go to places who are special because they've arrived. This is an opportunity. This is a place that I can continue to build a, a legacy. This is a place that has all the required elements for success. It has nothing to do with laying in my laurels. I wake up every morning and all I want to do is get to work. I love my family, but my drive is to get better at whatever I do. And no matter what my age is to improve. And that's what my goal is for here, it's just to get better. To give the student athletes an experience that they can go back years from now and say, this was the best experience of my life. And we, we owe them that because they got choices. You know, this is not like you got two choices. There's a lot of places that they can go to. And we have to make this place the most special place where other schools will be envious. Look what they're doing at Texas. This is insane. Look how the kids are improving. Uh, and I remember my, my colleague telling me, some of the athletes you coach, I've never heard about it. Who are these people winning national championship? Obviously, we, you know, we, we struck gold with Sydney. And she was developed also. And, and that's my strength, finding the best in people and making it come to life, it, no matter how good they are. I mean, Sydney was a phenom, but she's improved for a second in all her events. That's my strength, that's what I do. That this is what drives me, is to find that aha moment where the athlete realize that what you see in themselves is possible. And sometimes that's a battle because the athletes don't always see that right away. And, and sometimes they're a little reluctant to see that. And, and my desire is to build this place into its rightful place. What should be, it should be at the top of all the schools. Not just in performance, but people should be envying us. They should desire to use us as a model. Uh, uh, Coach Cal is a good friend of mine, and, and, and that's what he's done, and that's what I want to do. I, I want people to say, hey, we're going to do what Texas just did. Uh, we're going to build what Texas just built. We're going to uh, uh, change uh, uh, this to what Texas did. And, and we should be the benchmark for all of this stuff. And, and, and that's going to be my job, to pick people that can work alongside me, that can uh, develop this into a national power, that, that can build it into what it should be. Uh, and, and in no disrespect to anybody who came before me. This is not about me, this is about Texas. It has nothing to do with me. I'm just a guy working with student athlete. Uh, another good friend of mine, uh, uh, Robert Thornton used to say, it's just another day in paradise. You know, maybe I've landed in paradise a little bit, but I'm not looking forward to fall asleep. I'm looking forward to build paradise into what it should be. So uh, I'm just thankful for the opportunity I'm just thankful that, that they saw me as a fit um, for such a special place, and I'm looking forward to going to work. That's, that's my strength. I just go to work. I'm, I'm not interested in anything else but working and getting better and doing the job I was hired to do. The questions for Coach Ford? Yeah, the pressure is on. I mean, we, we can't host and, 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 uh, and do poorly. Um, so I got to make sure that this very first time we host that, that we quickly turn it around. Um, getting to know the athletes is important. You, you don't look at their performance and say, I, I know him or I know her. It, it's knowing their strength, their weaknesses, what they're afraid of, uh, uh, um, what their limitations are. And, and that's not something you're going to find out by looking at a number. That number doesn't mean anything. The relationship between the athletes has to be built on trust. They have to trust me when I ask them to do three events in one day. And I'm not going to get that because I'm loud, and I'm not going to get that because I got flow nose 
and Floyd Nose didn't carry it very far unless the student not they trust you. And I got to get involved with study all. I got to get involved with their, their personal life. I got to get involved with their majors. I got to make sure that they understand that I care about them more than just running around the track. And that's not going to take a week. That's going to take months to build that trust. But I firmly expect to build that trust by the time we get to outdoor. I have to, because you know, being in the back of the pack, that's not what you guys want. That's not what you hired me for. So I'm, I'm not a fool. I'm hired to do a job, and I'm for completely conscious of what that job is. That's not an easy task. That is going to be a difficult task. But you know, it's like um, I forgot the name of that movie. But the, the gentleman was talking about uh, two guys in a car, and they said a lot of people talk about the moment, but few are prepared for the moment. I, I'm prepared for this moment. I've been preparing all my life to get to this moment. Uh, coach marginal athletes to greatness. I've coached great athletes to even greater. Uh, I've been at a place that nobody thought would ever going to be any good. I, I'm not afraid. That, 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 that doesn't scare me. Any, any idiot that goes to Kentucky who was dead last in the conference the year I took the job, or you're either an idiot or, or you know something about something. Uh, and I think I know something about something. And, and I know something about hard work. Flow knows has nothing to do with what I know. It has to do with what I'm willing to go find out about. That's what Flow knows is. I will find out the information required to get these people better. That's what Flo knows. Flo knows he ain't good enough. Flo knows he got to get better. Flo knows he got to improve. Flo knows about the athletes. Flo knows nothing about himself. And that's kind of what my, my mission is. So I'm going to find out what we're afraid of. I'm going to find out what we're good at. And I'm going to make it better. Did you really not go visit? I uh, asked uh, Mr. Barnard three Did questions. Did I my facts here? Buddy? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, nice. I, I was at the Olympic trials in Eugene, Oregon, and they flew to meet with me. I, I, mean, I was at Stanford and, and just had uh, the number one man and number one woman recruiting class. So I, I was not in a position where I was looking forward to, to leaving. Um, and it was a challenge. And, and I'd always hear the coaches in the SEC say, yeah, SEC is different. There's some bad dudes and bad women out here, man. You don't want to come out here. And I thought, you know what, I, I think I want to come out there and, and find out. So when Mitch talked to me, and, I, and it was appealing, the fact that we want to build a, a national powerhouse, and I thought, yeah, let's, let's go try it out. And then he told me, we'll bring you in for a couple of days, and I told him, the track oval? He says, yeah. Blue, right? He says, yeah. Got grass, yeah. It's blue? He said, no, it's green grass. They call it blue grass. And I thought, nah, I'll take the job. So I just <laughs> backed up. Because if you really think about it, the stuff is just the stuff. You can use the stuff for whatever you want to use the stuff for. So going out there, hanging out, meeting a bunch of people, to me that was less important than the fact that I believed that I was willing to do whatever it take to be good there. So the confidence was in me to do the work required to make Kentucky successful. But clearly though. I used to let the kids see their vision for themselves. I, I was helping on them seeing my vision for them. And I just kept pounding. I kept pounding until the point that they just gave in and said, yeah, for sure. I think I can be good. Just let me say it so I can get you off my back. And then they begin to say, well, wait a minute, I, I think I can be good. So I, I think young people want direction. They want leaders who believe in them. They don't want a mushy leader. They want a guy that's going to expect them to go to class, that's going to hold them accountable. Uh, they want a guy that's going to walk the campus and see them to go to class. I think sometimes, you know, like I, we lift weights at 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm at weightlifting every morning. And my belief is, why should I ask them to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning when I'm going to be asleep? So whatever the student athletes do, uh, I do. If they got to get up in the morning, I'm up in the morning. If uh, the first event, like, until the last kid can beat, I'm there. It could be pouring rain, I don't care, because I can't ask them to perform for the university, uh, for their team, for, for their community. If I'm sitting in a hotel, cozied up, watching TV. So uh, you have to sort of invest yourself to the point where they believe that this is not about me, this is us. This guy's always there. This guy's the first one to give me a high five. This guy is in a weight room. This guy comes out there hang out with a cross country team and watch him practice. All this stuff is invest, investment in them. And when you do that, they reciprocate. They reciprocate big time. We talk about the millennials and all this stuff. I, it's just getting involved. I, I, I think they're a little bit different, but I'm going to make myself into a millennial so I can go hang out with them. And that's what I do. I, I tweet, and I do it. And some of the stuff they do is a little cuckoo. Um, but I do cuckoo. I don't mind doing poo -poo. If that's what it takes for us to be successful, I'll make myself into a poo, -poo and I'll find find a way to kind of reach them at their own spot. Because you know, I got two over here that <laughs> they're, they're a little different. You know, I remember my son texting me from the basement asking me what's for dinner. Uh, like, you got 12 stairs, man. You can. And I thought, why fight it? That chicken. 
<laughs> what kind of chicken? You know, so he's sitting there thinking, I'm texting a guy that's in the basement about a meal that he's going to eat anyway. You know, but it's just, hey, you know, great, no problem. I just make myself available. And I just join them. I just you know, try to reach my, my beautiful 20 year old daughter. It's, it's challenging. But I got to get to her world and make myself the dad that she envisioned. Whatever that is, I'll morph myself into that. And I just don't fight many battles. I just don't believe in fighting battles because the ultimate battle is to get the kids to graduate and get them to perform and get them to enjoy the experience. And the most important thing about this job is this man. Uh, um, man, I, I'm, I wasn't sold at first. I'm like, I don't know if I like this guy, but after hearing his vision, after hearing his passion, that he really wants this place to be successful, I, I was sold. I, I wanted this thing to get over with ASAP because I thought, man, we've raced in weeks. I could be out there recruiting, but I could be out there getting the staff together. We should, we should have done that weeks ago. I could have gotten a whole lot of stuff done by now, and I'm thinking, speed it up, brother, let's go. But, but I'm, I'm pretty clear on, on kind of what he wants. And, and when an athletic director tells you, well, we want to be pretty good, you, what is pretty good? It's, you know, it's like ambiguous. Okay? We want to be no worse than top 10 one in the national championship. So uh, I'm clear. And then I think we need to have clear goals. That, People need to be clear with each other. I, I don't want to get better. Right? But I want to be told we got to get to this part by this part. Okay, great. Then I can kind of put a roadmap to that. But I'm not interested in the, the fluffy stuff. I'm sorry. I think some places uh, they're like a, a tree, hard to get your hands around. And the challenge in life is just try to get your hands around. I, I don't want to get a small tree trunk and oh success. I've got my hands around. I think this is a cool place because. No matter how big you get, you can never get your hand around it. You just got to keep working at it, and that's, that's what I like. I like the fact that, that you can't outgrow the place. And, and, and um, I got to a spot where I felt that my next vision with where I was was maybe a little bit limited, and I, and I want to get to a place where I can dream big, I can come up with stuff that, that somebody's not going to tell me, oh, we don't do that here. And, and, and this is the place that, that you can dream big, and you can tell the student athlete, stuff and they're like ooh and then the stuff materializes itself so, and I think that's important so the so vision belief and commitment is important and, and, and letting the kids dream big and you know, run with it that, that's important also as opposed to limiting them and that's what I'm into and I, and I think this is almost a limitless place I and mean, you can build whatever you envision and once you've done that you can reinvent it again which is really cool just continue to keep reinventing yourself I was actually talking to a friend of mine and in, 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 in the recruiting there's a few things that I told myself I'm not doing that. And um, I lost some recruits because I'm not doing that. Or guess what, I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to change my recruiting strategy. I'm going to get out there and then talk to these. I'm going to send birthday cards, birthday wishes, fluffy emails. I'm going to send tweets, man. I'm going to do it, all of it. Because if you don't do that, that's your refusal to adapt. And you can't complain if you didn't get to recruit because you're too hard-headed to adapt. So at 51 years old, I'm going to reinvent myself again, and I'm going to do it again and again and again and again and again, because our limits is kind of what we decide. I'm not going to do that. And the thing is, I'm never going to say I'm not going to do that. My only commitment is to do it uh, uh, ethically and by the rules. Beyond that, I'm going to do whatever it requires for us to be successful, whatever the student athletes feel that is important to them. Uh, if they're into the fluff, we're going to fluff them. If they're into uh, making this a Taj Mahal, well, let's make it the Taj Mahal, but we gotta perform. We gotta perform at the highest level. It can't be a give, it has to be a give and take. If we're gonna do all this stuff, there gotta be some stuff coming back, because I think the community and the other department expect and demand that stuff. Um, I'll say that, you know, obviously you don't wanna spook people, but I'm on the hunt, uh, um, and obviously we want the very best people uh, uh, who can actually share the vision. Um, I, I don't want people to come here because they've arrived. I want people to come here to say, you know, I, I got a bigger cannon. Uh, you know, all of a sudden I got uh, uh, more things to sell. I have more appeal. I, this is, this, is sick. this place is sexy. Man, let's, let's, be, let's not fool ourselves. This is a sexy place. Man, it's, it's, man the, I remember uh, I knew things were going to go down the hill fast when, when I went to look at the fight zone and start memorizing the eyes and things. I thought, what am I doing? I, I'm just leaving my job yet. Um, you know, but but it's it's cool. The song is cool. That the hook and that's all cool. That's all real sexy. That and that's what's important. Is that this, these days, it, it sells and it makes kids excited to be part of something that, that they can be proud of.
will be handled very, very quick because I, I think it's important that the student athletes get the adjustment to the program. Uh, obviously, I don't want them to come back and, and be behind. So that's the first that's going to be handled. Get somebody of, of highest quality. And, and um, to be frank, not every distance coach can coach here because we're warm. Uh, somebody that can coach at 60 degree weather, right? That's ideal. I mean, we're not going to get that here. So uh, picking a person that can coach in a warm climate is important. So just pay attention to what really matters because uh, you can take a guy that's really successful and, and he can struggle here because a little warmer than it is in, in, in some of the, the cooler places. So all that stuff has to be tended to. Yeah, well, I mean, they, I guess they're tweeting about it. I, I guess we have to make room for them. Um, and, you know, on the post collision side, I, I think when kids come here and they aspire to one day be a professional, having a stage where that's already set makes it easier for them to transition. Um, you know, you get football players that come, they want to go in the NFL. Uh, why not the same thing here? Why not have track athletes come? And, and I'm sure you guys know some of the names of the people that, that I coach, and they're, they're excited. I don't know if they're more excited than I am, but they're, they're certainly fired up um, to, to be here. Um, because the place is special, yeah. So they'll, they'll, be, they'll be coming. The, the people who are fit will be coming. Uh, and what they offer is a huge amount of knowledge and experience to our student athletes. I mean, these people have won Olympic medals and world records. Just imagine if you're scared before the NCAA championship, you're sitting next to a person that's like, oh, God, I went to the Olympic trials and I choked. I didn't even make the final. So big deal. Let's deal with this. And, and I think it makes it easier for the kids to feel like it's going to be all right. So uh, they play a huge part on, on, on not my success because the development is I had to develop them, but on the success of our student athletes. And they're involved and in, they're not just training. They're, they're, coaches there. They're setting up hurdles and, and setting up blocks and then talking to the kids about, you know, nerves and, and things like that. So um, the, the professional group is not just professional group. They're, they're volunteer coaches. There are people that, that, that work with our student athletes and talk about technical aspects and make adjustments. So uh, they're fully integrated in the staff. And that's what's cool about it is that it, it becomes, when you have a world record holder setting up your hurdles for warm-up, I think it's kind of intimidating to the competitors and kind of cool is that, oh yeah, my hurdle goes right here, please. And, and they don't mind doing it. Sydney be part of that group? Pardon me? Sydney? Yeah. Yeah. What about former Kentucky athletes? Are any of them thinking about transferring to Texas? Um, I, I mean, right now, I'm not interested in ramsacking in, in any place. I, I'm, my goal is right here. I, I want to focus on, on the kids who are on this team and who are part of this team. But I, I'm not. I'm not encouraging any of that. that that's not. That's not the, the quality that I think Chris expect from me. I, I'm not doing that. I'm not inviting anybody to do anything. I just need to deal with what we have here. We got. I got plenty of issues here to deal with. So the last thing I need to do is add more headaches for us. So I'm not encouraging anything. They they, they make their own decision. But my my concern is student athletes on this campus. Coach, along those lines, I think Texas had 20 injuries total in the NCAA's. Great technique, improved speed, tremendously. I'm, I'm, I'm maybe a nerd, whatever you want to call it. Um, I believe in technique. I believe in perfection. I believe in adjusting the foot strike. Uh, uh, how much uh, force you generate off the ground. Uh, you know, what's the lead leg angle? What's the trail leg angle? Uh, uh, how high can your knee be? Uh, strength levels, clean, squat, all that stuff is important. So, to me, it's like this. You can always get better technically. Um, if you try to get an athlete to run fast, the coach, this is all I got. But if I improve your technique, you move more efficient. And, and you might not have the same raw speed as somebody else, but if you're more efficient, in the end, that person's going to get fatigued. And when they get fatigued, your better technique will take care of business. Anything. And it's really cool because I get to use this money. It doesn't count against me. So <laughs> right. I'm definitely down with that. And so right. I'll, I'll definitely uh, I'll be glad yes. to talk about that. Um, because if you think about it, we got limits in scholarship, but if I can use some of this to make us better, I'd be an idiot not to do that. So I absolutely, if I got to beg, beg in, whatever I have to do to, to build a relationship and try to get this thing going. And I also think I got to be fair to, you know, I don't want right. to use this athlete and kind of damage him. So I got to make sure that I can contribute something back. So what, whatever and however I can work within his system to help him be more successful, uh, I'm down with it. If I, if I got to help a group, hey, man, let's do it. Coach. How good is Anna Hall out of Colorado? Excuse me? Anna Hall out of Christian Valor. Um, I'm going to stay away from 
mention about there is any proof, so. Yeah, oh, I got you, got you. Pardon, no. <laughs> it was the answer that got me here. Uh, yeah, we could do that. And, and, and I think the cool thing about Chris is, even I get no, and sometimes it's not no as but, we could do this instead, a good substitute. And I think that's the cool thing is that he, he sees he sees it the right way. It's like, I can't do that, but I can do that to substitute for it. Fine by me. As long as my boss wants to explore other avenues, I'm down with it. I know that some of the stuff I have in my mind is not going to happen, but if he has a good substitute for it, uh, that's good too. I haven't seen all the stuff yet, so I'm, I'm going to not comment on something I'm not completely aware of. I, I've read the proposals, but that's really all I've read, so I'm, I'm not going to comment on, on what's the official new rule until I can see it. Um, yeah, so I, I'm just not sure what was decided. I know what was some of the proposals, so I'm just not going to comment until I know for sure what I'm talking about.